So now we're going to look at timesing by 100. Uh, if you haven't looked at timesing by 10 yet or you're unsure, look at the video on that first. Okay, so you look at the number of zeros and there are two. Uh, so all of these numbers, these digits here, one digit, two digit, three digits, all of those digits are going to move two places to the left. It's going to get bigger. If you time something by a hundred, it gets a hundred times bigger. Great. So the decimal's there. It will stay still. The numbers will move around it. And they'll move two places away from it. And those two places will fill with gaps. This number is 70,000. It often helps to put uh, a line or a mark of some sort every three digits, starting from the right. Here's the right and putting a line every three digits to read numbers. That's 70,000. 70 and thousands. There's the decimal point. There are two zeros, so those numbers are going to move two places away from the decimal point, which leaves two spaces. Fill them with zeros. That's 7,000. A hundred lots of 70 is 7,000. Two zeros. There's the decimal place. 7 moves two places to the left every time these numbers are moving to the left. And they're moving two places because there's two zeros. It's created two gaps between it, the 7 and the decimal. Fill them in 700. You can then rub out the decimal. It's not wrong to leave it, but it's just not necessary. There's a decimal. This is going to move two digits, two places to the left. The first one takes it one after the decimal. The second one makes a, creates a gap between it and the decimal. That must be 70. It's going to move two places. There's the decimal. First place, second place. That must be 7 with the decimal right behind it. You could put 7.0. You can just put 7. They're both the same. Timesing by 100. 230. There's the decimal. These digits are going to move two places to the left. They're going to create a gap between them and the decimal of two places because there are two zeros here. Fill them with zeros. That's 23,000. Remember, put that line in. Here's the thousands, 23 thousands. They're going to move two places to the left. That's going to create a gap between where the decimal currently is and the three of two places. 2,300. There's a decimal place. The two and the three move two places to the left. It creates one gap, 230, that we fill with a zero. There's the decimal. These two digits are going to move two places. 2.3 would be one place. 23 is two places. That must be 23. You could write 0.0. It's not wrong. It's just unnecessary. But it's fine if that's what you prefer. Okay, apologies, uh, it was showing times 10, so now we're into times 100. Press pause now and try these. And then press play, and you'll see the solutions. Welcome back. Let's do the solutions. So, you hopefully you've noticed by now, and that's on purpose, that all of these numbers are very similar. They're all 4, just in a different place. It's really to emphasize that where we write that 4, totally changes its size. This is 400. This is four tens. This is just four. This is four small things. They're one tenth. They're like four uh, 10p coins or four 10 cent coins. And what we notice is when we times by 100, let's go back to the examples we did earlier, none of the digits have changed. None of these digits have changed, they're still there. 
digits haven't changed, they're still there. We may add or remove zeros, but the digits remain the same. There's a 23 here, a 2 and a 3 every time, and in all of the answers there's a 2 and a 3. This always happens when we're timesing by 1, or 10, or 100, or 1000. It doesn't happen with other numbers. If I do 5, or let's take the examples from above, 23 times 4, everything's going to change. That becomes 92. The original digits are no longer the same. The only time they are the same, and they are always the same though, and that's really helpful, is in these special cases where we're timesing by 1, or 1 times a power of 10. So there's a real quick way to do these as we're seeing. It's going to get bigger because we're timesing. We're not sharing it with people, we're making it bigger. There are two zeros, so they're going to move two places to the left and you'd have got 40,000. Two zeros, two places to the left, there's the decimal, creates a gap of two, fill it with zeros, 4,000. Two places to the left, creates two gaps between the four and the decimal, 400. Goes two places, that's one place, that's the second place, there's one gap between the four and the decimal, that must be 40. It's two places away from the decimal, so when we move two places, it will just go past the decimal. So that's 4.0, and you can just write it as four. Two zeros, two places left, always. If you haven't, now try the ones on the right here. Press pause while you do that. Then press play to watch the rest of these solutions. Everything's getting bigger. There's the decimal. Two places creates a gap of two. So hopefully we're seeing this pattern now. However many the zeros are is how many gaps are created between, if it's a whole number, this is a whole number, there's no decimal part, there's no like 0.3 at the end or something, then it's always going to create that two gaps that we fill with zeros. 87,000. Remember, put the line there to see that they are the thousands, so there are 87 of them. There's the decimal. Everything's going to, those digits are going to move two places to the left, creating a gap between the decimal and the seven of two, which we fill with zeros. 8.7, we move it one place, we move it a second place, there's only one gap now, 870. They're both behind the decimal, so when we move them two places forwards, they'll both be in front of the decimal. 87.0, we could just write 87. There's the decimal, it creates a gap when we times it by 100 of two places, because the two twos moved two places to the left. We're going to move them two places to the left, creating that two-digit gap between those di the 254 and the decimal. So that's 25,400. Remember, put in the line every three digits to help you read numbers. That's 2,200. There's the decimal these digits are going to move two places, so one place would be 28, and the second place creates a gap between the 8 and the decimal, which we fill with a 0, that's 280. There's a decimal. Moving it one place would bring the eight, both 8s to the left side of the decimal, and then we move it a second place, which creates a gap between the digits 8 and the decimal. Fill the gap with a 0, that must be 2880. Well done if you got all of those right or only one wrong. If you didn't, see if you can do more practice. Make up your own questions and then use a calculator to check. It's super important. Everyone leaves school knowing how to do this. And you can know how to do it. Good luck with the rest.